So I'm here with two players who need absolutely no introduction. It's Team GB's Robin Love and Laurie Williams. Hello, Cassie B. Hello. <laughs> You're back. I'm excited. Are you excited? Very excited. Very excited. Yeah, we're both, both pretty excited. <laughs> Lots to look forward to, definitely. <laughs> How so? You've had some time away, an international retirement, a, a baby, not necessarily in that order. Um, but how did you come to the decision that now was the right time for you both to come back for the European Championships? Yeah, I think like obviously we had this like life changing event, which was the birth of our daughter, and you know it's it it's just an incredible thing that we both experienced, and I think speaking on behalf of Rob's a little bit, she just needed a bit of time to like enjoy that and for us to be together as a family. And, you know, sometimes you kind of lose yourself a little bit in, in, in basketball, especially when you're an athlete, it becomes your whole identity. And I've taken time out in my career and I think Rob's just needed a bit of time out. And I was especially grateful at the time because it just meant we spent a lot of quality time together and a lot of um, first time parents will know that a newborn is a lot of work and it's, and it's a challenge. Um, but yeah, I think you made the decision that you just were missing basketball and you wanted to go back. And I think for me as well, it was um, the prospect of kind of returning with Rob's was hard to say no to, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, for me, I think uh, Tokyo was a pretty tough experience, you know, and, um, for me as a whole, like we came out of it, didn't really perform how we wanted to perform. And I think since then, I just carried this just like weight on me, to be honest. Um, and from then, we didn't really have a break. We had a European Championship straight away. Laurie got COVID, had to stay in Spain for 10 days before Christmas. Uh, and then, of course, we had the Commonwealth Games uh, as well. So for me, I've just like not had a pause. Um, and I really do think that all athletes should take a pause. Um, mine came a, a good time, you know, having having Alba to, to be there for, which, you know, I really appreciated. And, and of course, you know, I, I played a bit of tennis, which, you know, I'm very grateful for that opportunity. It's something that I've wanted to do all my life was, was be a tennis player. And I've done that. But I think for me as a person, I'm a, I'm a team player. I'm a team sport kind of gal. I've got four sisters, so it's a basketball a basketball squad on the court. Um, so for me, you know, just taking that time and, and honestly just choosing myself. You know, I chose myself, chose my family. And in team sport, like Laws said, it's, you sacrifice so much for the team, for the team, for the team. Um, and within that, you do lose a bit of sense of self. And I certainly did. And, you know, I just needed a short pause. Um, and I feel brave enough to say, you know, I made a mistake in terms of like retiring as a whole. But, you know, I think that it's important that we can retract and, and go back on our, our decisions. And for me, you know, I've been brave to do that. The team have accepted me back in, thankfully. Um, and we've had a really strong camp of, on the run up to this European Champions, which team mascot has been part of. <laughs> So how has the, the vibe been back? How's it been being back in camp? Does it just feel like you've, you've never left? I mean, obviously, Laurie, you've had a little bit longer away than, than Robin. Uh, yeah, so we went to, I came back, had a camp, then went to Germany straight away, where we uh, went three for three against the Germans, which was a pretty nice feeling uh, to come back and have three wins straight away. Um, but loved it. You know, for me, uh, I love basketball. I love being in a team. And that's what I wanted to focus on. The wins are definitely a nice bonus. But for me, I was just excited to be passionate again and that passion helped me play pretty good for the team and um, which helped us get the win so for me yeah it's just been that enjoyment and have an alba on campus certainly been different hasn't it always yeah it has she's um <laughs> she's just an absolute like joy aren't you and the girls are like in love with her as well um but yeah like you said like i've been out for for quite a while you know it's it's probably about a year I think so a lot of that time was spent away from from camps and the girls and you know really just kind of like doing my own things during pregnancy so coming back in it's like quite refreshing like I've definitely seen a big shift in in the culture within the team you know the girls are a lot more confident um yeah it's just really really 
positive and the atmosphere is it's a really nice one to be about and sometimes it's difficult to like come off the back of a tough tournament um like we experienced in tokyo but you know they've just seemed to have made progress here there and everywhere and i think it puts us in really good stead for for qualifying for paris and um yeah, I'm just I'm just really glad I'm, I made the decision and and we were able to get to a, a point where, you know, we thought we could be back in the team. Mm. And has the time away helped you see the game a little bit differently? Maybe when you've been watching, you know, do you see it differently when you're watching sort of as a fan or are you just watching for fun? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Because obviously, like, I was still with the Lightning team during the, during the domestic season, so... I was kind of on the bench with them, supporting them. Um, but honestly, like, the further on I got in pregnancy, the more kind of like this baby brain just took over. And I'd like to say I could have contributed a bit from the bench, but I was just like, <laughs> just literally just turning up and having a bit of, a bit of a change of scene, I think. But yeah, I don't think, uh, all that it did was kind of like, motivate me to get back because you know when you see a get the game that you love um being played it's like, oh god i wish i could get on court again and you know get stuck in um so yes yeah, it's, it's nice to have a different perspective on things and uh so your, your first game is on friday friday the 11th against germany and then it's just five straight days of, of games which is, is pretty different to your regular season how do you how do you approach that or is it just like right we're in tournament mode we have to go yeah definitely tournament mode kicks in um and you just kind of go with every day as it comes basically uh that's how i kind of run my life to be honest which is why i've got so lucky to have laws who is a forward thinker um, but that's where, honestly, we both kind of come into our elements. Um, having Alba there, she's coming with us, um, is going to be certainly be a bit different. Um, but I think when it comes to gameplay, you know, we're both been doing this together for, what, nine years. And Laurie's obviously been playing a lot longer than that. Um, so I think that, you know, you just take every day as it comes. Um, well, honestly, the prep has just been fantastic uh, with Miguel and Jorge and the girls. And I really do think that we're really ready to kind of just jump into it and hit the ground running on Friday. Have you had, have you, how long have you had together of preparation? If you're allowed to say, you might not want to give away the team secrets. <laughs> long time. So we're, we're at camp just now in Loughborough. This is our, our hotel room. Um, so we've been on camp since Worlds, really. Um, most of July, we've been on camp. And then this week's been a five day camp in preparation. So um, it's kind of been a, a centralised summer. Um, so we've, we've lived in Loughborough basically all summer. Um, so, yeah, the prep has been pretty intense. You know, no no summer holidays for us. Um, well, afterwards, of course, but hopefully it'll be a happy one, qualifying for Paris. Um, but, yeah, the prep's been all, all of July, basically. So that's probably pretty different, is it, to the last Europeans? It was just at the end of December 2021 when COVID was still quite, quite dominant. Yeah, because we were in season. So we were in season, so we were training with Lightning. Um, at the last one, but we still had a GB camp every month. So for us, it was probably more intensive. Um, but some of the girls who played abroad, they stayed abroad. So we didn't actually have as long together as a team. So like Joy was out in Alabama, Helen was in Spain, I believe. Um, some of the other girls were away abroad. Um, so for us that were UK based, we, it was pretty intensive, to be honest. Um, and it was a good quality training. So similar ish, because um, again, <laughs> we were at Loughborough. So yeah. You know, I think it was definitely a comfortable environment, which led us into a really positive, although COVID-filled, uh, European Championships. So hopefully we can repeat the same without the COVID drama, please. Thank you. That would be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got um, you've got some some younger players on the squad this time. Uh, we've got Maddie and, and Anastasia. What um, and you two, like you say, you've played together for a long time and, and you know, individually as well. What do you kind of... Um, how do you help those younger players through? Do they come to you and ask you for, for any advice or you know, do you try and give them a few tips and things? Yeah, definitely. I think they're, they've just got such an eagerness to learn, which is fantastic. Um, you know, and they're constantly asking questions and we've really kind of built this culture of, of openness and, and people aren't afraid to ask questions and, and teach each other. And, you know, we, Robin and I still learn from our teammates every single day um but yeah like it's 
it's nice having younger players brought in because they just they push you and they challenge you and you know we certainly obviously our ages are a little bit different to theirs now so it's nice to have that kind of like energetic youth um you know and they and they challenge you in really really positive ways and I think it's exactly what what the program needs and mm. you know it's just the potential is it's you know fantastic really and and it puts oh. us in a really good place I think going forward you know and that's what what that's what you want that's what the program needs yeah definitely the investment in the women's premier leagues you can really see the kind of product of that now but I think in the next kind of couple of years you're going to just see um the GB program the women's side just being so competitive which I'm you know excited about um, but for me as well, like Lo said, I think the young ones just bring that silliness. Um, and I think, you know, when we've been in the programme for so long, uh, you take it pretty serious, it's your job. And it's good to remember that that silliness and, and the enjoyment of it. So, yeah, it's great for the, the squad to have shifted about a bit. And you know, I'm really excited about this team that's going to the Euros. I think, I think pretty much every video or clip we saw of Maddie Martin from the world, <laughs> she was singing, she was dancing, she was having the time of her life. <laughs> Yes, you're a legend. <laughs> so I, I spoke with um, Joy and Charlie back uh, during the World Championships, and um, Joy mentioned Laurie that you know you were someone that she looks up to as a player, as a person, and wants to play like, um, and obviously gets to play with you on the, on the team. Who who was that for you when you were first starting out? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Like there were obviously. Uh, when I started playing, there was um, a few tournaments in Manchester. One of them was the Paralympic World Cup. That was put on every year, kind of in in preparation for the for the Paralympics in London. So I just started out playing at the time, and uh, a few of the GB women, like I just looked at. Well, I thought they were all fantastic, to be honest. Um, you know, when you're that young, it's just you just think it's incredible, incredible. Um, and I think for me as well, like there was a. There's a player from USA who coaches the women's team now, actually, um, Christina and Swab. She was called Rip at the time, and she was just brilliant. Like, she was in the same class as me, and just like her skills, everyone on the basketball court were just like admirable. And she was such a leader. And I think I just used to watch her and be just like blown away by the talent. Is it pretty? Is it pretty special to hear someone say that about you? That you know you are someone that they they look up to and respect like that. Yeah, definitely. And I think the thing is with with people in you know everyday life, you don't really go up to someone and say, "Oh, by the way, like I just admire you and what you've done." And you don't you don't say that, do you, in conversation? So she was pretty chuffed. She was pretty, <laughs> she was pretty chuffed. That's what she's supposed to say. Oh, it's always nice, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe people should start doing that. Maybe we should just start walking up to, to our colleagues in work. You're awesome. Yeah, you know what? Why not? I do think people need to compliment each other more. Yeah. Yeah. So the squad that, that is together, it's it's pretty stacked. It's a, a pretty stacked squad. Um, and you've got players, obviously, that have played in the UK in the Women's Premier League, some some players abroad. But who who on this particular team are you really pleased to be playing with rather than against? <laughs> Oh, that's oh, a good question. That is a good question. Jade. <laughs> glad, glad to be not playing against Jade. Uh, you know, I love her. She's just this powerhouse. And every day, she's just getting... I've returned back, and I just think she's just raised her level so much. Um, she's a she's a centre. She's an out-and-out -out centre. But at the same time, she can, like, ball handle, score frees. You know, in running basketball, whenever a, a centre brings down the ball, you're a bit like, oh, pass. Pass. Yeah. But, but like with Jade, you're just like she just got this look in her face. It's like I'm gonna do something here, and I believe she will, and I know she will. Um, so for me, it's it's definitely Jade. Mm. She's just think, like, shots as well. Just like get out of here. Yeah, she's another one that's just come on like leaps and bounds since the yeah, return. But you could go through every single mm. member of the team, and there'll be something that you're like, I'm glad you're my teammate, and I'm not playing <laughs> against you. Like. Joy is just absolutely relentless on court. And to play against someone like that, it's a nightmare. You just wish, like, mm. just give up, just stop. But she won't. She goes and goes. And, you know, Helen, obviously, and her ability to score. And even, like, you know, the girls who, who aren't who aren't the five on the court, the ones that are on the bench, they're just constantly, like, mm. chanting, shouting, heckling players. And honestly, like, when that's you're against that, it's like you just – they can grind you down the bench. So, you know, honestly, the way that the team is – 
it's come on it's it's yeah. good like i'm glad i'm playing with them not against them that's for sure so what's your favorite thing about the way each other plays about each other's game oh you go first um i think with robin like you know sk skillfully she's like just insane tactically technically everything about her game i think is like brilliant but one of the things I love about her the most is the passion and, and the emotion, the energy she brings. Like, you love to play with that kind of hype player. And that's exactly what Robin is like. You know, you know when you're in a, in a end game or, you know, it's going down to the wire, you just know she's going to bring that and you love it. You know, you love someone to, like, get riled up with. Um, and that's just like, yeah, I'll absolutely love that in teammate. <laughs> so you wouldn't want to play against me? Definitely not. <laughs> I'd be throwing my elbows your way for sure. <laughs> Honestly, the Laurie Williams pokey elbows. She might be five foot one, but she's got a five foot seven and a half wingspan. Trust me, those elbows have got me a few times in the scrimmages. Um, what do I love most about how you play? Just absolutely relentless. Like you said, Joy was, but pff, Laurie Williams does not stop. She just makes you hate hate your life. If, if she's defending you, you just hate it. You hate it, you hate it. And you think, yep, got mismatched, no problem. Nope. Like, what is it? Go, go, gadget arms. I think that's a bit old school, but, like, these arms just come out of nowhere. Um, and as well, like, she's just got your back, so, like, cross, just creating. Like, she's such a, a creator of ball that you just know you're going to get something with laws on the floor. Yeah, I think you're brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favourite descriptions. <laughs> <laughs> playing um that's awesome that's awesome um so the the netherlands current world champions holders from the european championships last time um and you faced off against them several times it's becoming quite this rivalry between gb and the netherlands um you're facing them on home soil so how do you kind of approach a team like that i think like every team you know in the women's game especially at the minute i think it's anyone's game uh, no one's untouchable um, the Dutch are obviously a well-drilled team and I think what makes them different is they play like no one else plays so they don't run like a traditional kind of screen with a shooter behind they're very much a match-up one-on-one jam cut team um, so whenever we go against them I love it I love playing the Dutch I love a battle I love a fight uh, I love that energy um, and anytime I go up against them just like any team I think we're going to win. Um, so for me personally, that that's going to be my attitude. Is Miguel? Miguel, our coach is Spanish, and uh, trying. He always is no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So for me, you know, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Will it be a bit a bit strange playing against Bo, uh, your teammate in Loughborough, or is it just again out the window? We're on court. We're not friends. Then. Yeah. <laughs> Out the window, we're not friends, uh, be friends after, but on court, it's almost like everyone's got the same kind of face mask on, they're just a, a person, a player. Um, of course, I'll be nice and kind, but when we enter those four lines, absolutely not. <laughs> so for people that haven't seen Team GB play before, how would you describe your style of play? Um... I think like traditionally we've always been a, a team that likes to play with a lot of pace um you know we like to run in transition a lot um and that you know it is slowly evolving because obviously we've got these big powerhouse four fives now and and they're changing the way we play a lot you know they're kind of coming in and, and playing a really strong inside game and creating a lot of different looks for us that we've not really had in the past um you know i think as well we, we pride ourselves on being very physical um, and trying to just bring it right from the start, um, defensively and offensively, really. Mm. And so, and this, the European Championships this year, so they're taking place as part of the, the Para Championships. There's a, a whole lot of different sports going on. There's some wheelchair tennis, there's a para archery and para badminton. Are you going to get a chance to see any of those, you think? Or is it it's just going to be, you've got a pretty packed schedule as it is? We probably won't, Kazi B, I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. Uh, I've been to two Paralympic Games, Laurie's been to three. Have you ever seen any other, apart from the men's team, have you seen any other? No. Wow. We, we, haven't, <laughs> we haven't even been to an open ceremony or a, you know what I mean? So, 
it's just like quite full on. And obviously, as you said, we've got five consecutive days of games, um, which is a lot. Um, yeah. So, you know, with that and with training, I think the time that we do have is spent just recovering. And, mm. and obviously now for us, it will be spent with our little baby. <laughs> yeah. So we've got even less time yeah. um, for ourselves. Um, but maybe we, you never know, we might we might get a chance because I think at the venue there's multiple sports going on at, at our com competition venue as well. So mm. um, you never know, we might get, get to have a cheeky look at something else going on. Yeah. I think we're pretty fortunate. Like we both live in, obviously we both live in Manchester. Uh, we live in Manchester, and we're very fortunate that you know we've seen the the rugby league, the wheelchair rugby league World Cup. We managed to go and see the final of that, where England won, which is fantastic. You know, so for us, we travelled to Tenerife to go and watch the FIBA Women's World Cup. So we we love to watch sport, and um, but I think that the European Championships for us is is work time, and I'm pretty boring to be honest. You know, I like to just wake up, eat my breakfast, team meeting, on the bus, there we go, back on the bus, watch some video. I'm very much like in the in the bubble uh, and that's how I like to do it. So not too many distractions for me apart from this one. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a pretty successful um, attitude so far. It's been it's been good. Um, what what particular part of your game, I guess more for you, Robin, what particular part of your game do you feel like you've worked on the most this, this season? <sighs> Yeah, um, I think with Lightning, you know, um, something that I've been working on with George Bates, the coach, is almost being more selfish. You know, as a, as a person in general, uh, I'm very much a, a team player. I want to see my teammates be successful. That's very much my personality. Um, but with George, he's just like, look, for us to be successful, you need to score. You need to be doing this. Um, and actually, you know, my time at tennis has made me more confident to do that and just because it's only you on that tennis court that you're the one that's uh, can make mistakes and make the success so having that experience really fed into my basketball game um, so that's definitely something that I'm going to have more confidence bringing, bringing back to the GB programme. That's really interesting. That is. Mm -hmm. you, you say, you know, being selfish and scoring but let me just throw your stats out there for you. 17.8 points per game. Eight Eight assists per game, leading the league in assists, and ten point seven rebounds. You're practically averaging a triple double. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Well, takes a team. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I could talk to you both all evening, but I will let you go and get back to uh, to Alva and Camp. Um, thank you so much for your time, and good luck with the tournament next week. Thank, thank you, Kazi. Thank you, Kazi. <laughs>